And thank you very much, Amnon, for your kind words. And, uh, you know, we are in the Middle East, and we um, used to, to bargain. Let's settle for ten and a half. Is it a compromise? Acceptable? December 2000. <laughs> Ellie, it is ten and a half. December 2004. Ten and a half. Ten and a half. Okay, so I thought it's a fair compromise. Now it's the right compromise. Okay, the next speaker, Dr. Aliad Kozma, the head of the Left Sion Institute. Yeah. Um, I, I won't take too much of your time, uh, just a few words about the center and several uh, gratitudes that are in order. Uh, first of all, to say that I inherited a very active and vibrant uh, center from my predecessors. That was Professor Morgan Amitai and then uh, Professor Wani Shacham, who's here, and Professor Leigh Khatina. And what I try to do here is to create this center or to enhance this center as a hub of activity. Uh, that would connect different parts of, of the campus with different parts of the faculty that normally do not interact. It could be Jewish studies and Islamic studies, or uh, the Center for the Study of Christianity and Islamic Studies, um, a book event combining the um, Arabic uh, department and the Hebrew department. So we can uh, use this center to communicate with each other uh, in campus. The other goal I had in mind uh, when entering this um, office uh, is to make this activity also relevant for students, to create, stu uh, to create activities um, in the Arabic language, and we had uh, a very successful event on Women's Day, um, um, the first conference in the history of the Hebrew U, as far as I know, in the Arabic language, um, that attracted not only, only people from um, from the university, but also people from the north who came in, in a bus, and um, it was really touching and moving to see that that we would manage to to be relevant not only to the uh, academic community, and not only to the student community, but also to the larger community here in Israel. And indeed, the other important thing I I try to do is to connect the university to Jerusalem through our uh, collaboration with. Um, uh, with the Islamic Art Museum in Jerusalem. And, and I think this should be, and many people are talking today about the death of the humanities, and I truly don't believe humanities are dead. And uh, I truly believe that, that when given the opportunities, people want to read more about the Middle East, and people want to hear more about the Middle East, and not only what they're fed uh, in the media, not the usual suspects, but rather scholars sitting here at the Hebrew you have a lot to say to the general public, and the public is coming. So I, I think that these are things to um, to keep in mind when we ask ourselves why do we need this such a center, and what I believe should be done in the in the years to come. And I and I have several people to thank for what we accomplished this year. Um, the Lexion family, uh, who's here, and, uh, and Mr. Amos Bahad, one of the uh, only people who. Uh, economically supported this center in the last two years and enable us to do what we what we've accomplished. Um, and I thank of course uh, Sasha Schneidman uh, for some reason called Sasha Schneidman, Sasha and the others. So here's Sasha and the others. Uh, and for for enabling the kind of activities we're doing for being so creative uh, in um, in enabling what we've done this year, uh, I think, <coughs> um, to this 10th uh, annual lecture. Um, and I also want to uh, congratulate uh, Ilan um, Shokahat for uh, his uh, going to be given the award, and we'll say a few words in a few minutes. Um, and I also want to thank Obi Cosmo for designing this beautiful invitation. Thank you very much for coming. Very much, uh, Liat. Last but not uh, least, on behalf of the Lepsion family, Dr. Osnat Lepsion, our general manager of Hadassah Hospital.
behalf of the family, uh, we're very excited and happy and grateful to be here to, this evening. And we were very fortunate to be born to an amazing uh, parents. And the thing that usually you learn to appreciate your parents when you're an adult and you raise your own kids and you see things that, how they um, cope with. But I think with us, I think as kids, and teenagers, we already knew how to knew to appreciate them, um, and it's it's very sad that they're not here to to see it, uh, to see their grandchildren. And their oldest one is already twenty. And I know to some of you it sounds weird that I have a twenty-year-old, but um, I'm not that young anymore. Only you stay young. I'm not in that one, <laughs> which is pretty amazing how the gap. Uh, and uh, but one of the amazing amazing things is that their spirit is still with us, and they were both innovative, always creative, and uh, very hard workers. Although always the family was the top priority, and um, one of the amazing things in that is the center for Islamic studies, Lebanon Center that is still, still not only but it, not only being here but very vibrant and very active, and it's amazing that it's already the, the tenth lecture or whatever you came up the calculations were, um, and we know that um, all of the heads of the institute before and yet and unfortunately struggling with the same issues and. Uh, which we're always hoping and trying to, to find new resources. And as you said, unfortunately, to me it sounds such a sexy sell in this crazy world. Uh, and we will manage, we'll crack the, the, the thing yet. Um, I think one of the issues that came out of being uh, with a very limited budget is a lot of collaboration that are being done with other institutions in Jerusalem and in the country in general. And I think really it, it enabled the, the, the center to be um, very pluralistic and we're doing different activities from which, which some are very highly academic, which I won't understand a word in, and others are very popular, which I think one is one of the goals of the centers, really, to teach, teach Islamic not Islamic studies, not necessarily what my father was interested in, um, but really what's happening today. And I think that um, we are very fortunate. We were very fortunate with the previous heads of uh, the institution. We're very fortunate that we are now heading it and opening new horizons. And we had uh, meetings, we had and myself, and really it's amazing the way you think and about the gender and how we really bring in the Arab students into the center. And I think that's the goal of it. And I think that in this, um, this is really what the spirit of our parents is. It's to go, not necessarily to the highest, you know, academic, uh, socioeconomic class people, but no, go to what Israel is about. And it's, it's my dad with all that Amnon um, very kindly mentioned, and periphery and everything. And by the way, each university and college that he are doing a lot of things in his memory. And it's hard work. Uh, in Sapil, where they now have thousands of students, the president always says it all started with Nehemia. Or the president, the previous president of Shenkao, they're giving awards on his name there too. He says, you know, think of it, he calls me and says to me, I have money, what can we do? Let's open the second, the master's program. And, um, and what you're doing now with this New Horizons is really in his foot Um And I think that just, especially today, when Islam is taking the news in such a negative way, I think the importance of the center is even bigger. Really to teach, and in our hospital we have um, we have Arab population, Jewish population, and I always say that that's where coexistence begins, because we show in the hospital that medicine is a bridge to peace, 
And it's not necessarily between Arabs and Jews, but it's also between secular and ultra-Orthodox, where no other place they'll have a chance of just sitting and talking. And uh, I think the center here has the same issue. We really need to, what I always say is when you know you don't hate. And that's one of the issues that you're doing with all the tons of activity. And uh, hopefully that the university will be able to be a little, a little more supportive. And um, we need, as we said, we need to find the right um, venue to so you won't have to struggle so much with the financial burden and really be able to concentrate on all your brilliant ideas. And so thank you, thank you all. And um, Gilad, um, congratulations. something in brief about my thesis. Um, I'm studying uh, a Palestinian brotherhood. In Israel, we have about three or four Palestinian active brotherhood orders or Sufi orders. Um, and I'm focusing on one of them, which is center, uh, world center is in Acre. And uh, uh, I'm focusing in, in, inside this subject of Palestinian Sufism and the specific uh, brotherhood in the uh, last uh, uh, 20 years of the current Sheikh, uh, the P 
field of QHF, which is uh, today lives in Amman. Uh, his father was uh, uh, moved, to, he moved to, to Lebanon and the current chef is living in Amman. Uh, I had the honor to visit the chef a month ago. Um, so my, my uh, research is based uh, uh, first on, on uh, meetings and interviews with uh, with people of the Tariqa, with uh, uh, the Louise, the not students, but yeah, the students of the, the people of the Tariqa and the, the officials, um, you can say, of the, the leading the communities. What, what's um, unique about this Tariqa, uh, or this, uh, this brotherhood, um, many things, which I, I start to love more and more, so I, I just focus on two of them which I think have uh, importance here. Uh, first is, is the distance between the chef and his uh, people. Uh, so, uh, not unlike the other uh, brotherhoods in Israel, which the chef is very close to them, and they're very, very uh, local, uh, in Nazareth or in Bakar um, this chef is sitting in Amman, and his people are, are spread all around the globe, the globe um, and his center, and he's also distant from his place of birth and place of birth of the Tariqa, which was uh, established in Acre uh, 150 years ago. And this distance between the Palestinian leader and his home and town and home base is interesting in the sense of how a Sufi leader is, is, uh, is approaching this uh, problem. But it's, it's interesting also reflecting about the bigger Palestinian story of a leadership uh, away from its home and base. It's interesting also because this Tariqa, uh, like you can say, the, the, what people usually think about Sufism, that they are all about peace and the other faces of Islam, um, it's not always like that, but in this particular case, it is. So I'm, I'm, it's nice to, to be uh, to focus on this. It's not a reason I, I went there, but uh, this Tariqa is, is uh, really talking a lot about that, and this Sheikh, uh, although he is, uh, he was born in Aker and now he can't go there, he's still talking a lot about uh, reconciliation and uh, not dialogue with Israelis, but, uh, but he's talking about, uh, he's supporting uh, proper dialogue with, uh, with Israel, with other religions in Israel, in Aker, in the center in Aker, there are a lot of inter-religious dialogue happening. Um, so that's another unique uh, part of them. Uh, and, and another unique thing is the focus on um, academic studies or, high, or higher education, uh, which the Sheikh is, is very emphasizing very much. Uh, it's more than not going only to madrasas and, and, and uh, making more Sheikh or um, he's, he's very proud, and when you see interviews of, with him in um, television or on YouTube, um, he's proud to say how many. Uh, engineers they have, and how many doctors, and how many uh, other academics uh, people they have. And in this sense, I, I think this uh, research is also fulfilling one of the goals of the, of the center, which I just read, uh, about uh, strengthening the, the working contacts between Israeli students and Islam, uh, of Islam and Muslim academics institutions and academics. So visiting in Amman, I met a um, few academics uh, one, one, one professor teaches in Amman University, which is a part of the Tariqa, and he, he helped me uh, talking to the Sheikh and he gave me some background, uh, and I'm, I'm in touch with him, and a few other, and I'm another academic now in Jerusalem in, uh, in the University of Al-Quds, he's doing his master's here now, and he's helping me, and I'm helping him in other things, and I had the opportunity to talk to Professor Gineo about some things they have in, in the archives in Istanbul, they asked my help to, to see how to get there. So um, this research is also getting the, this goal uh, happening. And, um, and again, I want to thank you. Thank you very much.